नमस्कार सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ सीरीज आर एल सी सर्किट सो इन दिस क्लास वील कंटिन्यू अवर डिस्कशन ऑन सीरीज आर एल सी सर्किट एंड वील ऑल्सो सी द कंडीशन वेन योर आर एल सी आर कनेक्टेड इन पैरल एंड देन यू प्रोवाइड द स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स टू दैट सर्किट सो लेट्स रिकेप वाट वी वर डिस्कसिंग इन द लास्ट क्लास so in the last class we discussed about the step response of a series rlc circuit and uh, we discussed that at time t is equal to 0 when the switch is closed the ending equation for the particular circuit is ldi by dt plus ri plus v is equal to vs where the vs is the voltage source now when we rearrange then we got the second order differential equation and then we uh, discussed that the solution of the equation uh, which we uh, collected based on the uh, mesh analysis of series rlc circuit has two components one is natural response and another is forced response and we saw that the total response is the sum of forced response as well as natural response to get the natural response we set vs equal to 0 and we found the three conditions like overdamped critically damped and underdamped situation and we got the three uh, voltage values under these three conditions and then we discussed that uh, the forced response is nothing but the steady state value across the capacitor that is nothing but the voltage vs and finally we got the three uh, conditions that is overdamped case critically damped case and underdamped case and uh, what we were discussing in the last class is that we have got these three equations in terms of two unknowns those are a1 and a2 which we can the value of these a1 and a2 can be found with the help of seeing the initial and final conditions like initial voltage or uh, voltage across capacitor initial current through inductor and similarly the final values so on so what we will do we will uh, try to understand the fact with the help of an example so what we will do we will uh, take this example in this example the switch is open at time t is equal to zero and the resistance r which is given in the uh, figure is 5 ohm so what happens the switch is initially closed and when it is open the circuit is converted into series rlc circuit so now let's try to find out the value of current i at any time t and value of voltage at any time t so if you see this particular figure when this switch is initially closed for time uh, t less than 0 what happens that this particular circuit will give inductor as a short circuit because it is switch is connected for very long period and the capacitor will be open circuit because it will be charged to certain value and it will act as a open circuit so what we left in the circuit is only these two resistances so based on these two resistances we can find what will be the value of voltage across capacitor at time t is equal to 0 and what will be the value of current which is flowing through the inductor at time t is equal to 0 so that would be our starting point now given in the question as a 5 ohm now switch is closed at time t is equal to 0 so particularly at that time that is at time t is equal to 0 uh, we need to first find out the value of current flowing through the inductor so what we will get since we can see from the figure that only these two resistances are in the circuit and current flowing through the inductor is nothing but current flowing through the resistances so what we get is that 
24 volt is the voltage source and value of R is 5, value of 1 ohm resistance is added in series with the 5 ohm resistance. So, total resistance of the circuit is 6 ohm and which is applied across 24 volt. So, what we get the initial current that is current at time t is equal to 0 is 4 ampere. Now, initial voltage across the capacitor would be same as the voltage across 1 ohm resistor. So, you can see from the figure. So, we need to find out the value of the, the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor. Since we know that the current which is flowing in the circuit is 4 ampere which we just calculated. So, the voltage across uh, the capacitor will be 1 ohm multiplied by 4 ampere that is 4 volt. So, we get the initial voltage across capacitor is nothing but 4 volt. Now, when time t greater than 0 the switch is open that means the 1 ohm resistor is now disconnected. So, when you open this switch at time t is equal to 0 this particular resistor will be disconnected from the circuit. Now, in the circuit we will have only R of 5 ohm, 1 Henry inductor and 0.5 farad capacitor. So, we see the typical case of series RLC circuit. Now, in this case what we have to do? We have to first find out the characteristic roots because it is a series RLC circuit we discuss what will be the values of uh, the characteristic roots. So, let us find out the value of alpha alpha is nothing but r by 2 l and we get the value of alpha as 2.5. Omega naught is nothing but 1 by root L c and the value of omega naught is 2. Now, you see that alpha is greater than omega naught. It means that we have the overdamped condition. So, in this case the overdamped means your value of the characteristic roots would be minus 1 and minus 4 which you can find from the formula that is sigma 1 2 is nothing but minus alpha plus minus root of alpha square minus omega naught square. So, since it is a overdamped natural response the value of voltage across capacitor at any time t can be given as a force response that is V f plus a 1 e to the power minus t plus a 2 e to the power minus 4 t. Now, V f is the forced or the steady state response. So, if you see from the uh, figure which is the modified circuit when the switch is opened. So, the V s the uh, final value that is value of V f is nothing but V s because when the capacitor is charged to its value the current will be 0. So, at a steady state the value of V f would be 24 volt. So, we can now write that V t is nothing but 24 plus a 1 e to the power minus t plus a 2 e to the power minus 4 t. Now, next task is to find out the value of a 1 and a 2. Now, from initial condition that is V at time t is equal to 0, we know that the value of voltage was 4 volt which we just calculated. So, if we put t is equal to 0 in this equation we get the 24 plus a 1 plus a 2. So, finally, we get a 1 plus a 2 is nothing but equal to minus 20. So, this is what we get from voltage across the capacitor at time t is equal to 0. Next we know that the current through inductor cannot change abruptly and it is the same current which flows through at time t is equal to 0 plus means even when we open the switch the current across the uh, current through the inductor cannot change abruptly. So, what will be the since it, it is the series circuit. So, the current which is flowing through inductor at time t is equal to 0 will continue to flow through the capacitor also. So, we can say I naught is nothing but C d V naught by d t is equal to 4 ampere which we calculated previously. So, now d V uh, d V by d t at time t is equal to 0 is nothing but 16. So, this you can calculate from the equation. 
Now, before using this condition that is dv by dt at time t is equal to 0, we have to first take the derivative of v. So, we know that this is the value of v at time t. So, let us take the derivative of this. When we take the derivative, we get the value of dv by dt as minus a1 e to the power minus t minus 4 a2 e to the power minus 4 t. Now, you will put uh, t is equal to 0. So, you get another equation for a 1 and a 2 that is minus a 1 minus 4 a 2 is equal to 16. So, now you have two equations for a 1 and a 2 first you got from here and second you got from here. So, you, you can use these two equations and find out the value of a 1 and a 2. So, when you get the value of a 1 at a 2, you can put the values in the value for voltage at any time t and you get the expression for voltage at any time t as shown in the equation. Now, since the inductor and capacitor are in series, the inductor current is the same as the capacitor current. So, what we can say? We can say inductor current I can be given as C dv by dt. So, when you differentiate this and multiply by C that is the capacitor, you will get the value of current I at any time T also. Now, if you put the value of T as 0, you will get the same expression which we derived for current I at any time at time T is equal to 0, which is our expected result. So, in this way, you can calculate the value of unknowns that is a 1 and a 2 with the help of initial values that is inductor current and capacitor voltage. Now, let us move on to the second case that is step response for a parallel RLC circuit. Now, in this case suppose the parallel RLC circuit is shown is in this figure here what we are doing we are initially keeping the uh, switch closed at time t is equal to 0, we are opening up the switch so that we get the parallel RLC circuit. At time t less than 0, the current source will be short circuit. So, when we open it, then it will be converted into parallel RLC circuit. Now, at time t is greater than 0, let us apply KCL at the top node. So, what will happen? The value of current Is would be divided into three circuit elements that is R, L and C. So, what would be the value of current flowing through resistance R that is V by R, V is nothing but voltage and any time T across the capacitor plus I that is the current I which is flowing uh, through the inductor at any time T plus the capacitor current, capacitor current can be given as C dV by dt and the sum of these three currents will be equal to the value of source current that is I s. Now, we know that V is nothing but L di by dt. So, we put the value of V in this equation and when we rearrange, you will get the final equation as d 2 i by d t 2 plus 1 upon R c d i by d t plus i by L c equal to I s upon L c. So, this is what you get from the parallel combination of the circuit. Now, the complete solution will be consisting of natural response as well as forced response. So, you can write the total current I is nothing but forced response and natural response of the current. Now, natural response of the current is same as we got in previous section when we discussed source free parallel RLC circuit. So, we can write those equations. So, what we got that natural response is nothing but in case of over damped, it is a 1 e to the power sigma 1 t plus a 2 e to the power sigma 2 t where sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the characteristic roots of the governing equation. And in case of critically damped, the natural response was a 1 plus a 2 t into e to the power minus alpha t, alpha was the damping coefficient. And in case of 
under dam we got e to the power minus alpha t into a 1 cos omega d t plus a 2 sin omega t t where omega d was the damping frequency. Now these three we got uh, when we discuss about the source free response that is natural response of the circuit. Now force response is the steady state or the final value of I. So, if you see uh, the circuit when the switch is opened for very long period this inductor will be short circuit. So, whole current that is I s will flow through the inductor and you can say that the final value of current which is flowing through inductor is same as source current that is I s. So, you will add the value of I s in place of the I f t that is the force response. So, you will get the total value of current I t is nothing but I s plus natural response of the circuit in case of over damp. Again I s plus critically damped response of the circuit when source is not uh, available and in case of under damped we get I s plus the natural response of under damped circuit. So, these three we get based on the various conditions with uh, respect to your uh, the damping coefficient and the natural uh, frequency of the circuit. So, that is alpha and omega naught. So, under various condition you will get these three condi uh, these three values for current I t. In case of over damped your alpha is greater than omega naught. In case of critically damped alpha will be equal to omega naught and in case of under damped alpha is less than omega naught. So, now in this particular set of current equations you know that the a 1 and a 2 are the two things which are unknown. So, how we can find we can again use the initial values of current and voltage that is current flowing through the inductor and voltage across the capacitor to find out the value of a 1 and a 2. Now, how we will do? Let us take one example so that uh, the things are more clear. Here if you see the circuit the 4 ampere current source is connected across the inductor. So, at time t less than 0 when the switch is open the current is flowing only through the inductor. So, you can say that at time t less than 0 the circuit is divided into two parts. So, one part is where the current source is available second part where voltage source is available. So, at time t uh, less than 0 when the switch is open the current will be flowing through the 20 Henry inductor. So, it means that you can simply say current I at time t is equal to 0 is nothing but 4 ampere this you can get easily from the circuit. Now, you see that the voltage which is connected across the, uh, the second part of the circuit is 30 u minus t volt. So, what does it mean? It means that at time t less than 0 the value of voltage is 30 volt. At time t greater than 0 this value becomes 0 volt means when the switch is closed this voltage source is short circuit. So, this uh, is something which you have to keep in mind because here the unit step function is u minus t. It means that the value of unit step function is like this where you have a value at time t is equal to uh, less than t is equal to 0, but it is 0 when t greater than 0. So, with these two things let us proceed to solve the, the circuit for t less than 0 this switch is open. So, we found that the initial current which is flowing through inductor is 4 ampere. Now, u minus t is equal to 30 when t less than 0 and 0 when t greater than 0. So, the voltage source is applied to the circuit only when t less than 0. 
Now, at t is equal to 0 minus that means, just before the switch is closed, the capacitor acts like a open circuit and voltage across it is the same as the voltage across 20 ohm resistor connected in parallel with it. So, if you see this segment of the circuit, the voltage because the switch is open for very long period, this will uh, the capacitor will act as an open circuit. So, the voltage across capacitor will be uh, same as the voltage across 20 ohm resistance. Now, at time t less than 0, the value of voltage source is 30 volt and these two are in series because the current will flow through this direction. So, what will be the value of voltage across 20 ohm resistor which is in parallel with capacitor? You can simply use the voltage division and you will come to know that the value of this voltage at time t is equal to 0 is nothing but 15 volt. So, this is our initial voltage across the capacitor when the switch is closed. So, we got two initial conditions uh, current which is flowing through the inductor at time t is equal to 0 and voltage across capacitor at time t is equal to 0. Now, for time t greater than 0 what will happen? The switch is now closed and we have parallel RLC circuit with a current source. Now, voltage source is off because for time t greater than 0 if you see the circuit for time t greater than 0 this will be 0. So, it means that it will be short circuit. So, now 20 ohm and these 20 ohm would both would be in parallel. So, what we can say that the value of effective R which is across the circuit will be 10 ohm because 20 ohm and 20 ohm are in parallel now this will be short circuited. So, now we have a case of parallel RLC circuit. So, we have inductor, we have capacitor and we will have another equivalent resistance of 10 ohm which is again in parallel. So, what we can do now? We can apply the equations which we got in case of parallel RLC circuit. So, characteristic roots we can simply determine with the help of the values which we calculated previously. So, alpha is nothing but 1 by 2 RC. So, if you put the value of R and C, R is 10, C is 8 millifarad. So, it will become 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 and we get the value of alpha is 6.25. Similarly, the omega naught is nothing but 1 upon root L c. So, if you put the value of omega naught, you get the value of omega naught as 2.5. So, here you will see that alpha is greater than omega naught. That means that this is a case of over damped circuit. So, what we can say the value of uh, the roots that is sigma 1 2 is nothing but minus alpha plus minus root of alpha square minus omega naught square and we get two characteristic roots. So, what we can write now? We can write the value of current I t that is nothing but equal to the force response that is I f t and here the value of I f t is I s which we just calculated uh, in the case of parallel RLC circuit and plus the natural response that is a 1 e to the power minus sigma 1 t plus a 2 e to the power minus sigma 2 t. So, here I s is equal to 4 this is what we, we can see from the figure when the circuit is the switch is closed for very long period the capacitor will be acting as a open circuit and the whole current will flow through. 20 Henry inductor. So, it means that the I s value is nothing but 4 ampere in the circuit. So, this is what we got that is I s is equal to 4 ampere. Now, if you put the value of t is equal to 0 in the above equation, you know that 
i at time t is equal to 0 is 4 which you just uh, calculated. So, you get a 2 is equal to minus a 1. Now, if you take the derivative of the above equation d i by d t, you will get this expression at time t is equal to 0 d i 0 by d 2 is nothing but minus 11.978 a 1 minus 0.521 a 2. Now, you know that the, uh, the voltage which is across the capacitor cannot change abruptly. So, it will remain as 15 volt and since capacitor is in parallel with inductor, the same voltage will be applied across the inductor also. So, you can simply write the voltage across inductor is nothing but L d i by d t at time t is equal to 0. So, this you can use and find out the value of d i by d t at time t is equal to 0. So, you got the value as 0.75. Now, you put the value in this equation. So, you get the value of a 2 and similarly we can get the value of a 1. So, now we have a 1 and a 2 we can simply say the value of current i t is nothing but 4 plus you can put the value of uh, the expressions uh, value of the components. So, you get this particular equation. So, this is the final expression of current i in terms of t. With this we can close our today's session. So, in this session we discussed the step response uh, for series RLC circuit as well as the parallel RLC circuit and uh, now we will proceed forward to solve these uh, first order second order equations in a more easier format. Because in these type of equations till now what we discussed was uh, based on the differential equations those were first order and second order differential equations. It is sometimes difficult to solve. So, we will use another technique called Laplace transform and we will try to understand first the last Laplace transform and then we will apply that technique to solve these first order and second order equations and first order and second order circuits again. Thank you.